don't mind the noise in the background. I'm about to show you. There's some major renovations going on in our house right now. But today is one of my favorite days of the year and that's what I like to call like a beauty maintenance day. So today I'm gonna get a little bit of Botox. I still want movement. I don't want a frozen forehead, but I'm gonna get Botox like right here. If you're new here, I used to get filler all the time and I completely stopped filler like a year ago, a year and a half ago. And I started my dissolving process. So right now, I think there still might be a little bit of filler somewhere. It might be still dissolving, but it takes a second. I love PDO threads to give the illusion that I want without having to use filler. So I've been using threads for my lips. I did threads like twice or three times last year. And I think after the fourth, I don't know if you need to get them anymore. So I'm getting threads in my lips, Botox here, and then I'm getting laser hair removal on my chin. I'm right here. Um, I'm actually really, really nervous. The last time I got laser hair removal right here was in fifth grade because Nikki and I got really, really bullied. We have dark natural hair. We were growing um, stashes in fifth grade. Now that it's been a good 15 years since, I'm starting to notice uh, some hairs here and there that I don't like that I would like to get removed. So I just wanna pop in here and let you guys know the good news. I am on Red Table Talk. It all started with bullying. I'm addicted. I'm pushing the limit. Cosmetic surgery. How far is too far? BBL. Nose job. Fat transfer light bulb. A lot of filler. For the first time, a red table intervention. I'll link the episode down below. And we basically talk about this entire topic. I talk about my plastic surgery slash face alteration addiction and how I learned about moderation, self-discipline, being present, and my addiction to instant gratification, which I touched base on in my shopping addiction video. I just want to disclose that just because I still shop and just because I still alter my face doesn't mean that I'm contradicting anything. I've learned a lot about moderation and do's and don'ts and one really main thing that I've stopped doing is filler. So in this video I am not touching a syringe. And I also just want to disclose that just because I spoke up about having regrets with some procedures I've had done doesn't mean I'm going to completely stop doing this sort of maintenance and I found as the older that I'm getting the more common it is for people around me to be getting these sort of procedures. A little nip and tug twice a year is kind of what I'm striving for versus all that everyday filler maintenance I was doing. So before I get any like beauty stuff done like to my face, I like to have a clean face. You always wanna make sure your face is clean before anything. Here's this hair clip I got on Amazon. I've been using my skincare line, Pumpkin and Spice. I'm gonna answer a few questions regarding my skincare as I'm washing my face. If you guys are interested, you can keep listening. If not, you can skip over this. I'm just gonna answer it right now. So here's my skincare. It's a night bundle and a daytime bundle all in one. Cleanser. I also left my spin brush in LA. So my new one comes in like tomorrow. We're finally getting a new spin brush after using the same one for so long. I feel gross using my hands on my face, so I like to use a washcloth. How long after using pumpkin and spice skincare did you notice a difference in your skin? Um, if you go to the first vlog where I mentioned pumpkin and spice, I had all this acne right here from the masks I was wearing and right now it's totally smooth. I'll even insert a picture of the before and after that I took. The after I took last week. I think it took two months but the third month like not dealing with any breakouts. What's your favorite product from Pumpkin and Spice skincare and why? I'm really, really starting to appreciate the daytime moisturizer and the nighttime moisturizer because my skin is one different person in the morning than it is at night. And my skin has improved tremendously because I have combo skin, so. Is Pumpkin and Spice skincare suitable for sensitive skin? Yes, I have eczema. I don't know if you guys knew that, but it works really good for me. And then what products work best for combination and dry skin? Um, I would say definitely the moisturizers. Like, I've seen such a difference. I'm, I'm so happy with it. Does pumpkin and spice skincare smell like pumpkin spice? Yes, it does, but it's not too heavy. I'm someone that, like, used to get super dried out by a certain skincare line because of, like, the heavy fragrance, and I am not getting dried out by this by any means. My skin feels really, really healthy right now. What makes pumpkin and spice skincare different than other lines? Well, um, I think it's obvious that this skincare line is very unique. Like, who else has a daytime bundle and a nighttime bundle? And they all work so perfectly together. Do Nikki and Colin also use your skincare line? What do you think? Nikki told me that the Pumpkin and Spice skincare smells better than her Bath and Body Works product, so. Is pumpkin skincare made with pumpkin spice? No, it's made with pumpkin seed oil. It is so good for your skin. Is pumpkin and spice skincare available year round? 
Of course it is. And just because it's pumpkin spice doesn't mean you should limit yourself to having good skin just for the fall. Can I find pumpkin and spice skincare in any stores? No, but we do have a website and I'm gonna link that down below. I'm just gonna add my moisturizer. We are about to head out. I'm wearing this coat from Selkie, I'm wearing a sweater from Shein, this skirt is from Shein, and then these socks are from Altered State, and these Prada shoes. When I first got in the car, I used an Instagram filter where I, it asked like, how old do you look? It literally said I look 40. KP Aesthetics needs me. I'm gonna switch to my phone when I'm in there because my camera's about to die. So right now, I have lines that I, I like them actually, weirdly. I like lines, but I don't like too liney. Like I like showing expression, I like moving. I just hate when I'm serious, you see like those three lines on my forehead, but I don't want to freeze my expression. Do you still want to do that? Yeah, Colin likes that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try to leave you with some movement. I actually forgot to film getting my Botox in my forehead because it's been so long since I got Botox. I was so nervous. But right now, Kim is giving me a PDO thread eye lift, a lateral eye lift, like that fox eye look. And if you guys have been watching my beauty maintenance vlogs this year, I think I have two other vlogs where I'm getting this exact same procedure done. And it's something you have to keep up with, I think, like two or three times a year until you start to form your own collagen. Correct me if I'm wrong. But you can see that I am in distress. And this procedure shouldn't hurt the normal person. But I decided not to get lidocaine. Every single time I get this procedure done on my eyes and lips, I do not use any sort of numbing agent. And that's because if I make this easier, such as not feeling it, I feel like I'll get addicted. So we have both threads on either side right now. As you guys can see, my eyes look more lifted, like almost like that fox eye effect. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm just going to leave my antennas. Wow. As you guys can see, my lips are so so much smaller than they were last year and that's because I don't get filler anymore I know I always say that but I've been using these PDO threads as the alternative because it gives a much more natural appearance and at the end of the day especially with your lips you will eventually no longer have to get them because the threads dissolve and you build your own collagen behind them the PDO threads give you like a squishy pout instead of a hard duck lip now as you can see I'm getting my upper lip wax unfortunately I'm not getting my laser treatment because I'm on antibiotics. I know everyone's gonna be asking because I was very open about my ponytail facelift in 2020 and because I don't wanna go under the knife, I've been trying to correct it with my PDO threads to give more of the ponytail illusion, the whole fox eye illusion. I choose to be open with you guys online about face alterations and stuff like that because I feel like there's a lot of influencers who don't show you what they're doing. I am being open with how I've been using the threads and I really do love threads, so. haul in the most random location. I'm not gonna show you guys everything, but I'll show you guys some things. I ended up going to Forever 21 and I made like friends with the workers. If you guys are watching, like y'all were amazing. And I got really big scrunchies because I ran out of scrunchies. I just lose them everywhere and I love big scrunchies. And I got these like fake Burberry pants. Oh, my little baby, my little baby. I'm in love. I am in love. Oh, you're so cute. So I got these leggings from Victoria's Secret Pink. I love how they look like a V. It goes down right there. And I got a strawberry Cinderella carriage bath bomb from Lush. And then I also got a body spray. It's called Berry Elixir from Victoria's Secret. 
It smells really good, me and Mike are obsessed. So I'm gonna start the tub and take a little bath bomb bath. That's it for my self-care day. I'm gonna start my nighttime skincare regimen. I'm using my jelly cleanser like I did this morning. Pumpkin spice night serum. Usually I'll use an eye cream, but I'm not gonna go anywhere near my eyes tonight, understandably. This is my nighttime moisturizer. It looks like frosting. Makes me hungry every time. My skin has never been better. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm tired. I just spray myself with beautiful mess before bed. She beautiful. <laughs> and I'm gonna layer her with my Berry Elixir from Victoria's Secret. I've been learning all about layering scents on TikTok. Just look at my skin. Hey guys, so I totally forgot to film an outro, but I went ahead and filmed this really adorable clip of Bear. He was so scared of the bear-shaped candles, or should I say dog-shaped, but they look just like Bear, and it was just so adorable. He thought they were like real dogs, but frozen. It was so funny, but yeah, that's it for this fancy vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And just a reminder that I am going to be meeting you guys for free December 18th in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania at Designer Consigner from 4 to 7 p.m. Make sure to mark your calendars and I'm excited to see you there.